Hi there, I'm Lori Petro, and you are watching another episode of our weekly Q&A where I show you how to create teachable moments with your kids. So likely by now you know that I am all about learning to change the way that we speak. Because when you change the way that you speak, everything changes. Now there are four habits that we need to become aware of before we can change anything. So today we're going to do a little perp walk with these guys. They are the four perpetrators of anger, violence, and aggression in our kids and in ourselves. These four violators of peace steal your child's emotional safety and leave you with the reflex to control and a bruised relationship. Whenever you are in a pattern of negativity or when you find yourself over explaining in your head, focused on rules, threatening, you might have one of these perpetrators inhabiting your language. Blame, shame, judgment, and guilt all add up to fear. Now fear can be beneficial when it's naturally induced and short-lived. But when it is punitive and chronic, it destabilizes your child's regulatory system, making him or her more easily frustrated, less likely to follow the rules and directions or what is being asked, and on a course headed straight for more serious emotional and behavioral challenges. So in today's Teachable Moment, I want to help you shift your language so that you can provide your children with the conditions that they need to develop and thrive. I once watched a mom have a debate and negotiation with her three-year-old son about the value of having just one more Thomas the Train toy engine for his collection. Now, honestly, both of them had very valid points, but neither was really listening to the other. And that's the thing. To do this work, it's not about getting your kids to do what you want. It's about teaching them to think, to delay gratification, to withstand disappointment, and to be motivated to accomplish things and consider others. You can't do any of that unless you give kids the time and the space to feel they're upset, especially about the limits that you set, and not talk them out of it. This requires a lot of active listening. Let's say, for example, that you're in the store and your two, three, or four-year-old keeps touching things. The traditional response to this repeated behavior might start out something like, I said no, now don't touch it again. Now what did I just say? Don't touch it. How many times do I have to tell you? You need to learn to listen and do what you're told. Maybe it even finally escalates to the threat of punishment. Okay, that's it. One more time and you're going in a timeout. Now that's a lot of demands, judgment, guilt, shame, blame, logic, and rule-based thinking for a child to have to contend with during an already upset moment. This period of development is quite sensitive, and the more fierce and inflexible you become, the more dysregulated your child becomes. Don't get me wrong, you may see short-term compliance when the four perps are around, but they are there stealing so much more from your child and your relationship, and they will never lead to the long-term learning that you're really after. So let's change it up. Let's move from making a demand, which you've likely already made once, to making an observation that's free of judgment. In a neutral tone, you can say, you touched this after I asked you not to. I can tell that this is hard for you, so I'm going to help. And then you might move the object, gently remove your child from the area, or hold your child's hand if you're in a public space. Now you've just acknowledged your child's experience and offered to help hold the boundary. You might even say, you're so excited, it's hard not to touch all this cool stuff when you really want to. Or in the case of my daughter, I might say, oh, it's so hard not to touch all these sparkly things. You just want to take them all home. It takes practice to stop our bodies. Let's take some deep breaths and try again. Now you've invited connection by honoring your child's intent and then providing him or her with the tools to manage the frustration about not getting what they want. If your child resists, stay calm and reassure him. I won't let you touch it, but I'm here to help. Are you ready? Let's try again. When we frame conflicts as challenges to be met rather than behavior problems to be punished, we give kids the feedback that making mistakes is safe and expected and that we'll be there to help support them when they're having trouble. Okay, that was my teachable moment for you. 
The most important communication rule that I can give you, especially around this age, the preschool age, is to not get offended by their tantrums or their protests. That is the way they learn, unload stress, and learn to persist in the face of obstacles. You only need to stand by as a safe, supportive witness and provide coping and adaptive strategies for them to develop and thrive outside of that emotional reactivity. Obedience is an unreasonable goal for any age, but for preschoolers, it's really detrimental to their emotional development. They need lots and lots of practice and repetitions and a safe, emotionally available adult to help them build their tolerance and resilience to pain, obstacles, and not getting their way. They won't necessarily like your limits, but when you hold them without being punitive or getting offended or angry, they will learn to respect them. Now what about you? Are you in the habit of using one of those four perps to get your way? If you are, you can be sure that your child has modeled this behavior and it might be coming out as anger, violence, or aggression. So how do you respond most often to your kids? Here is a challenge for you today. I want you to pick the most ugly reaction that you can remember saying to your child and then I want you to reframe it, removing the blame, the shame, the judgment, and guilt to make it more conscious. And then I want you to post that reframe in the comments and share it with us. You never know, just sharing your shift and how you speak might just be the inspiration that someone else needs to make the changes that they are looking for. And next week, stay tuned because we'll have another conscious communication tip with a slightly older age group. So did you like this video? Because if you did, I would love it. I would be so thrilled if you would share it with a friend or someone that you love because when you share the love, the love spreads. And be sure to check out my free four-part series on communication which kicks off enrollment to my eight-week online course, Peaceful Solutions for Parents and Kids. You can check it all out when you subscribe for updates at teachthroughlove.com or right here on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching and for sharing. Until next time, please remember, it's about consciousness, not perfection.